This is the Xtool D1 Pro laser cutter, and I've been really excited to try it out. I've been curious to try this out because I don't actually have a laser cutter in my shop right now, but I've used them in the past and I love them as a tool, but I don't have space in the shop right now for a really big enclosure. And it's interesting because it's this new style of open frame laser cutter. One of the things that makes this so small is the fact that it uses a diode laser module as opposed to the larger CO2 tubes that need to be water cooled and you have mirrors to focus and adjust. This is all self-contained in this little unit here. So I wanna give this a shot, put it through its paces. This is a five watt head, but I have the upgrade kit to 40 watts. This is the first 40 watt laser module on the market. So I'm really eager to try that out. You'll also notice it doesn't have a big enclosure. And you might be thinking, oh my God, Scotty, that's not safe. And I have similar concerns, but this has a, a little orange plexiglass enclosure around the laser head itself. There's no laser beams moving around outside of that. I did ask them to send me the optional portable enclosure that they had for it. We'll put that on after. I wanna try firing this up first without the enclosure. Now, this is not a sponsored video. They did send me this review unit and gave me an affiliate code, so I get a little cut if you decide to buy one, but I'm gonna do my best to give you my honest thoughts. If this works well, this will be a great addition to my tools. But for now, let's go back to me unboxing it and putting it together. put a whole bunch of screws in Now. So far, this is not too hard. It's 80% done. Excited to see your new laser cutter begins to take shape. Success is just around the corner. Completely unlabeled SD card. Congratulations, you've completed the installation. We've got a little surprise in our software to make your first project creative and memorable. Download the software and get the novice task. Let's turn this thing on. Woo, that's cool. Let's try a wooden phone holder. To protect your tabler floor from being burned or smoked, you can place the aluminum sheet delivered with X-Tool D1 in the working area or on your floor. All right, we're gonna put some basswood under here. Set the height of the laser module. Okay, so we flip this little guy down and then that drops down there. We lock that in and flip that back up. That's focused, I guess. Cannot open the example file. Maybe I need a different piece of software. This is often the, the weak spot of Chinese tools like this is the hardware is good and the software is a little rough around the edges, so. Do we boot it maybe? If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll find two comments. One saying someone is having the exact same experience I am. None of the example projects work on the only software that works with this machine. And the second person says, for anybody encountering this issue, there's a tool that will convert your LaserBox project to an XCS project. There are some known problems, such as text and graphic displacement, which will be resolved in later versions. Awesome. I guess I'm gonna Fix this by hand? This is dumb. <laughs> that does not look like this is supposed to look. You don't have to set any other parameters. Okay, I'm just gonna follow the instructions. I think this is gonna be a disaster. My fancy safety glasses. Ready for battle. All right, here goes. Okay. Oh, push the button. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I like that. Okay, it's doing a laser thing, but I don't think this is the right power settings at all, because it isn't doing squat. So, we're gonna have to do the thing that I didn't wanna do, figure out what the right power settings are selves from scratch. This is not a great first use experience. I'm gonna crank the power up to 10. Start, go. Yeah, still not really getting anything. 25% start. Okay, that's starting to work. 
pretty light, but doable. Yeah, that's pretty light. Well, I guess we'll just let this complete for now. The engraving portion is done. Oh, but now it's doing the strange parts text, and I didn't change the settings on that. So I don't think this is going to do much. The big question I have is, this thing doesn't home itself. It doesn't have any end stops. Oh, no, it does. But it never homed itself when it started up. So I don't know that it has much of a sense of an origin point on the work. So I don't know if I can run this again and have everything be aligned, or whether I have to manually realign it. It's doing the cutting out line right now at way too low power, so that's not gonna work either. Not, not super impressed so far. Okay, it did home back to where I think it started. So that's good. Let's come in and fix some things. So I wanna do the logo again at the same settings over the top and that will get us a darker image there. I might bump that up a little bit. Okay, cool, that looks like the same framing. Let's go ahead and run it. It looks a bit darker. Okay, that's what I was missing. I think a lot of these problems are the fact that this tutorial's all screwed up. Oh yeah, that's looking much nicer. Okay, I'm feeling better about this. We'll let this run. So far, not a ton of exhaust. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. There is some smoke coming out, but you know, it smells a little bit like a campfire in here, but it's not, not too bad. So this is currently doing a fourth pass. And I just think this is already through. Like I can see metal in a lot of spots. And we've been going for 21 minutes. So let's hit pause. This is well through already. Not bad. For some initial hiccups getting this working, this is decent. So that's a cute little demo project there. Make a little phone stand, you know, yeah. Rough start, but this is not totally crazy. I have a couple more things to unbox here. First off, honeycomb working panel set. This is basically like a metal cutting surface to cut on top of. So the idea is that it's very, very thin metal in sort of a honeycomb pattern. That's always pretty satisfying. It actually looks pretty good quality and I love the, the measuring on the sides. I also have an air assist set. I think it's more for using with the 40 watt module. So we have to make some modifications to the head. I think we're gonna go ahead and install the 40 watt first. This is the first commercially available 40 watt diode laser head. It comes with a couple circuit boards we have to stop. Okay, this is gonna be a bit of a, a project. building this thing from scratch. An ESP32 running the show. So I definitely know the ins and the outs of this thing. As a quick comparison. I imagine this goes here. I think I've got this set up. Air assist. Let's give this another shot with all the bits and bobs. And let's try cutting something a little more ambitious. Um, this is about five millimeters. Let's start from there, three millimeter. Power 15%, speed 50%, and one pass. So that's a huge improvement over the five watt. <laughs> Not four passes anymore. There goes nothing. I don't think that went all the way through. It did not. I also can slow down the speed. So speed and power are inverses. Let's slow it down to like speed of 35. I'm kind of going up incrementally so I don't 
use way too much power here. I'm going to slow it down to 20. It's nearly doubling it from 35. Let's stop this because the, the problem is if it's if it's if it's coming up like that, then it's not in focus. I don't like that. <laughs> Apparently it doesn't either. Well, let's just do another test. This is not staying aligned and we're not cutting through. So let's try going down to 10. This might be cutting through now. This is looking more promising. That did indeed cut this. I mean, that's a pretty decent cut. A little bit of charring on the bottom, but not bad. I'm gradually figuring this out. What I don't know is how to use its homing feature properly, but I think once you've got your uh, power and, and speed settings down, you know, you may not really need it. You just kind of bring this over to where you want it and go. Well, I think I'm gonna do some sort of little project here. So I'm gonna design something up and, uh, and cut it out. It's, it's kind of a finale here and, and really put this thing through its paces. All right, I have put together the silly little Strange Parts logo sort of thing here. I don't know what the hiccups are. I'm a little bit worried about that, but it's like it's hitting an end stop and not realizing it. Yeah, it did have an end stop, and now everything is misaligned. I mean, this is not gonna work. All right, let's do another one. I am very pleased with the quality of the cuts. As much as I'm frustrated with the software and, and some of the rough edges, the actual results are not bad. All right. Came out pretty good. That looks really nice, and it's really nice on the back, too. This thing's growing on me. Alrighty. This shows off one of the things I really like about laser cutters, which is it is really fast and pretty easy to get results that look awesome. Having used this, I feel mostly good about this setup. That being said, using this without an enclosure, I'll always wear the glasses. However, for all of those screaming at your screens right now saying, this is completely unsafe, completely crazy, I do wanna show off what the enclosure looks like. Oh, I see, it's fabric over corrugated plastic here. Pretty cool. And then the last thing that kind of completes the whole story here is the exhaust hose. So that's a satisfying sound. I dig it. Let's do a quick cut on it and just see how it does. Okay, let's go. So in theory, we don't need our uh, safety glasses now. I would believe that. Oh yeah, a little little homemade fog machine. I dig this enclosure. I don't know that I'll use it all the time, but for something really smoky like this, or if I'm gonna run a lot of parts, particularly a lot of small parts, this looks like it makes sense. I have very mixed feelings. On the one hand, I do love the form factor. This feels like something that I can just get out when I need it, put it away when I don't. That being said, <laughs> man is this thing rough around the edges. Putting it together, was actually okay. Changing over the laser head was a little more involved, but again, if you could work a screwdriver, not very hard. You know, the whole multiple versions of software, some of which don't work with this. Once I got over that hurdle, I would say that the quality that I'm getting out is, is astonishingly good. I feel really good about both of these parts. I'm eager to try it with other materials, um, specifically acrylic for making acrylic enclosures. The big question is, should you get one of these? And I, you know, <laughs> I feel really mixed about it. I feel like this is pretty expensive for what it is. The five watt setup with the gantry, I believe was around $550. And then this upgrade kit at around a thousand and then extra for, I think it's a couple hundred bucks for the enclosure. And it, it, I don't know what the air assist kit costs. For 
you know, 2,500, you can buy, you know, a fully enclosed CO2 laser setup. So I have a hard time justifying spending that much on, on this unless you really need something that's small and portable. If you would like to buy this, you can find an affiliate link down in the description. If you click that, I get a little cut. If you decide to buy one, every bit goes towards making new projects and new exciting videos. So be sure to check that out. I'm honestly excited to use this more. I wanna try it on different materials. I have so many things around the shop I wanna make with it. A huge thanks to x for sending this to me. I hope they can work out some of the, the rough edges here because I think that the machine itself, the hardware is pretty decent. Again, this is the X-Tool D1 Pro. I'm Scotty from Strange Parts and uh, I'll see you again soon.